from the beginning of time to the moment of consciousness, from the edges of the visible universe to the everyday world we behold. There is a connection, a divine dimension, and a purpose to it all. Join us and let's discover the truth together. Here is our host, Buck Eaton. Welcome. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining us. I'm glad uh, to, to to connect with you this evening and talk to you about something the Lord's put on my heart. Um, you know, we serve the God of the impossible. Nothing is impossible to Him. He wants us to. He wants to grow us to the place where anything that seems impossible is not impossible. That we live in the realm that all things are possible. And I just want to look at a couple of scriptures here in, in, in Luke chapter 1, uh, verse 26 to 37. It's, the, it's where the angel Gabriel comes to Mary. And in the end, he says, for nothing will be impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. It doesn't matter what the circumstances are. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter how bad it is. It doesn't matter how impossible it looks in the natural. Nothing is impossible with God. God's wisdom and His ways are so far above our understanding and our ways. And, and everything is simple to Him. It's so simple. You know, you can have situations with people where it seems like, you know, it'll take them years to kind of work through their problems and their issues and their circumstances. But, you know, in, in, in a couple of minutes, God can just do it all. Nothing is impossible for Him. It's actually easy for Him. We need to recognize it that our difficult circumstances, our tough situations are very easy for him. And he wants us to, to begin to think and understand things the way he does. He wants us to understand how the mind of Christ operates. And, and so he says, nothing will be impossible with God. And we, we, we must recognize that our dad, our heavenly father, our heavenly papa is, is the God of the impossible. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Anything that's impossible is easy for him. And, I mean, you think about just the creation of, of the universe. Well, that's, that's impossible. It's totally impossible for, that just, for matter to appear from nothing. But God, God can make matter appear from nothing, and he did. And look at the stars. They, I mean, we don't have a clue how big the universe really is. I mean, it's just beyond uh, our comprehension, really. And, uh, I mean, we're trying to understand it. In Matthew 19, 26, it says, With people... This is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. All things, not some things. All things are possible with God. And so, for the believer, he wants us to get the understanding out of our mind that something might be impossible. That in the, For the believer, all things are possible. And that's what Jesus said in, in Mark 9, 23. He says, if you can, all things are possible to him who believes. If you can. If you can. You know, Paul says that we have the mind of Christ. So what, what is the mind of Christ? What does it look like? It's, it's, it's the mind of God, how the mind of God operates, what, how he sees things, how he observes things, how he views things, how he understands things, the knowledge of God, the fullness of that, the mind of Christ. He says we actually have that. And so he wants us to see things the way God sees things. He wants us to understand things the way that God understands things. That all things are possible. That there's nothing impossible. And he says, if you can. So there's two things. He says, if you can, to him who believes. If you can believe, then all things are possible. Imagine that. All things are possible if you believe. If I believe, I choose to believe him. I choose to accept the mind of Christ. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to begin to see things the way he sees things, that nothing's impossible with God and nothing's impossible with him who believes. And I'm going to choose to walk that way. I'm going to begin to believe him and trust him. Now, I'm going to have to grow in it. It's going to take some time probably to develop and grow in this place of all things are possible to him who believes. And I want to, I'm going to commune with God. I want to fellowship with God. I want to know, I want to know his heartbeat. 
I want to know his purpose, his will, his desire in my life and how my life is designed to impact the world around me. And I don't want to look at any circumstance and situation and say, well, that's impossible. No, no, all things are possible to him who believes. And, 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 and I don't want to be one of those, well, if you can, maybe, maybe not. I want to be one of those that's, yes, I can believe. Yes, I can believe. I will believe. I will trust him. All things are going to be possible to him who believes. Whatever God's calling me to do, whatever he's speaking into my heart, I can do it. Because he's given me the ability. He's given me the anointing. He's given me his grace to do it. And I'm going to walk in what he's called me to do. And, I, and I'm going to trust him every step of the way. And he will be faithful to it. He will be faithful. He knows exactly what's going on on the inside of me. And as I'm talking about me, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting that you to understand that I'm really I'm talking about you. I want us, we, we, we're all on a wonderful journey of growing in this mind of Christ. And in the mind of Christ, the mind of Christ believes. The mind of Christ is never intimidated. The mind of Christ never falls down to fear. The mind of Christ is strong and, 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 and moves forward in faith and trust and regardless of what the circumstances look like. Think about Daniel in the lion's den. He, he went into that lion's den knowing that God will deliver me. My journey is not done. I don't care what these lions look like. I don't care how hungry they are. They're not going to eat me. I have a call and a purpose of God on my life. And the, and the lions didn't touch him. In fact, he, he used him as a pillow. And so he, he, just, he just, you know, lived out of that place of the peace of God. And that's what we're called to walk in and live in because the mind of Christ never loses its peace. The mind of Christ always... Has a, has a place of joy and life in it. Now, the mind of Christ, there, there is an anger of the Lord, a holy anger of the Lord to, to stop those and stop situations that are harming the people of God. He'll rise up against the, the enemy. He'll rise up against those who are trying to harm the people of God as well. And so he wants us to, to walk in that, that place of the mind of Christ where he is faithful. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to bring us through every circumstance and every situation. And he wants us to, to understand and realize that all things are possible to him who believes. And, and we must actually, you know, and part of the journey we walk through, we always get stretched. Well, why are we being stretched? He's, he's stretching us to train us to trust him. I don't see anybody in the Word of God, anybody in the Bible that did not have some hard roads, did not have some difficult circumstances. Anybody that did anything great for God that we see where they did something great for God, they all had some kind of journey to, to walk through. Imagine Noah at the time. The Bible says it didn't even rain in those days. And so he was told to build this gigantic ark, this giant boat, because it was going to rain and flood the world. And he looked like a fool doing it. But he just trusted what God told him to do, and he just did it. He pressed, he pressed through. He persevered. And oftentimes I see the impossible become possible, it's going to require perseverance on our part. We're going to get stretched. We're going to be forced to, to grow and trust more and more when the odds look even worse. Sometimes the odds will get, get worse and worse while we're being you know, stretched to trust more and more. And there will be people there to, to mock you along the way and tell you, no, it can't be done. You're a fool. You're crazy. You should give up. But you have to be true to what, what has God spoken to your own heart? What has God spoken to you? In that case, you must continue forward, persevering, trusting what God has said. Because, because he, he will test us. He will try us. He will, you know, stretch us. And he'll bring us to the place where it is impossible. He'll bring us to the place where it's, not even, it's just not possible. He did that, and you see, he, you see him do that over and over again with those in the Bible. He brought Abraham and Sarah to the place where it was impossible for them to have a child. And in that place, when God shows up and says, okay, this time next year, you're going to have the, you're going to have the son. You're going to have the, your promise. The Bible says they laughed. Abraham fell on his face laughing. Sarah laughed. I mean, effectively, they're laughing at God. What God was saying to them seemed so impossible that it became funny. And they, they themselves had even given up on it. But something in their heart still, still held hope that God's going to do what God said. And sure enough, you know, procreation-wise, they rose from the dead, and a year later they had their child. He's the God of the impossible. 
And this is where he wants us to be. Hebrews 10, 35 and 36 says, Therefore do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. And so he says, don't throw away your confidence. Don't throw, your, don't throw away your confidence that God is a man of his word. He is a God of his word. If he said it, he'll do it. Don't throw away your confidence. Hold on. Because there will be a reward with it. There will be a reward. God will come through when we stand strong. When you've done all to stand, stand therefore, the Bible tells us. You know, for you have need of endurance. Well, that's part of the training process. There is a, a need of endurance. You're not going to run a marathon by doing just wind sprints. You're going to need to train yourself on, on long distance running. You're going to need to learn how to endure in the run. It's not easy. It's a process. And to walk in the fullness of everything that you're called to do, there will be an enduring time. There will be a persevering time that will be required of all of us. And so, and it says, so when you've done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. Well, what was the will of God? The will of God in your case was to, to, is to endure. Just continue to go forward. You know, God didn't say, they say you got to make it happen. God will make it happen. But the key for us is to endure and trust and keep doing what he said. Occupy till he comes. Keep occupying and doing what he told you to do. You know, one time the Lord spoke to me and he said, just do what I tell you to do next. And so along the way, he's added different promises to me. He said different things. You're going to travel here. You're going to do this. You're going to do that and so forth. Well, I couldn't make any of those happen myself. I had to wait on God. And I had to just simply endure until the promise came. And I've seen it happen in my life over and over again where God brings forth his word without me actually having to do anything. All I had to do was endure and trust him and not give up. Years ago, the Lord told me I was going to go to Mexico. And so I said, okay, well, I don't really want to <laughs> at the time. That's what I thought. And, and, and six years later, I got a phone call from somebody asking me to go to Mexico with them on a, trip, on a mission trip. And I knew immediately, guess what God wanted me to do? Because he'd been, he told me six years earlier, and every year he'd been reminding me of it. He'd been reminding me, you're going to Mexico, you're going to Mexico. I didn't know when. I didn't have any contacts at that point to go to Mexico. And then out of the blue, a phone call comes in. I go to Mexico. I make, even, I make contacts. I make seven trips in the next two and a half years. And so God knows how to do things. God knows how to make it happen. The key for us is to hold on and endure and believe, continue to believe. And so what, I, so what I suggest that you do is that when, whatever prophetic word you've had over your life, just begin to declare that. The Bible says that we need to make warfare over the prophetic words in Timothy. And so, and so simply the simple warfare is you know, fighting your own mind of doubt and unbelief. Oftentimes you're, you're thinking, oh, that's not going to happen. It's too late. It's too, I, that's just not possible anymore. And the Bible says you know, to do warfare against that way of thinking, bring the mind of Christ into it. The mind of Christ says, no, it will happen in God's timing. God will bring forth what he wants to do in his perfect timing. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to keep speaking over, over, my, over my life the promises that he has spoken. This is what he wants to do. And so I choose to believe that. I accept it. I receive it. I believe it. I will speak it over my life. And so I, I had a, 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 somebody I was working with in a business one time, and he kept saying, well, and, and the Lord showed me before he ever came into the business that the business was going to be blessed of God and it was going to do some amazing things for God. It was actually an end-time business. And, and, uh, and we, in the, it was in the oil business, and the market went through a market crash, and it looked like the business was going to fail. It looked like it was going to fall apart, but it didn't. It survived. It stayed on. And somebody else came in to take the company over, and he kept making the comment, this company is going into a watery grave. We're going into a watery grave. We're not going to survive. And I would just say back to him, I would just do warfare against his words. I'd say, no, God has blessed this company. God has called this company. It's an end-time business. It's going to succeed and do what God's called it to do. And it didn't look possible. It didn't look like it could happen. And that company has survived and survived and survived and survived, and it survives even to this day. It's not walking in the fullness of God's promise yet, but it survived through some times when it should not have survived. And so that only encourages me to continue to, to, to press forward to believe God for what he said. And if he said it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to boom and blossom and, and, and have an impact in the world and creating wealth for people, then I'm going to trust him in that. And I'm going to keep speaking that. And I'm going to declare that over that company and, and for the purpose that, that God called that company to exist into existence for. 
And that company belongs to God. And I'm going to trust God with that. And I think that's the mentality that we all have to have. We have to keep, that, that's the mind of Christ. It doesn't matter how it looks. It doesn't matter, you know, how impossible it, it appears. And it looks impossible. On many, many days you can wake up and say, oh, this is just impossible. No, no. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what, it, what, what I hear in my, in, in, in my ears from other people. I'm going to believe what God said. And as long as that company is alive and, and, and breathing, then God can do it. And even if it dies, he can bring it back. But I know that God wants to, wants to do amazing, amazing things with it, and so I'm going to continue to believe God. I'm going to just declare it and speak over that company the life that God has already spoken over it. I'm going to agree with God. That's the part of the mind of Christ is being in agreement with what God said. And so what am I going to do in the meantime? Well, I'll just endure. I'm just going to endure and trust God. And I know the promise will come in the perfect timing. God's a faithful God. He's a good God. He'll be faithful to it. And so, you know, part of this process that we're in when we're enduring is being trained to trust Him. We have to, train, we have to get trained by God Himself, by the Holy Spirit, to, to be trained to trust Him in the midst of the endurance. That when you're enduring and all the doubts hit your mind and all the uncertainty and, you know, it doesn't seem like it's going to work, you just have to choose, I'm going to just hold on. I'm holding on to what God said. I'm going to trust God. And, and, uh, and so he trains us. You know, God's very gracious in training us. And he knows the difference between an immature Christian and a mature Christian and somebody that's, you know, growing in, 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 the, in those transitional phases. He knows, how to, he knows how to handle each one of us where we are. If you're a baby Christian, he knows how to handle you. If you're a, a little more mature, he knows how to handle you. And if you're a, a mature Christian, trusting him thoroughly in all circumstances, he knows how to handle you there. And, and he knows what you can handle. He knows what you can't handle. And neither way, in, in, in all circumstances, no matter where you are, he, is continuing to, he will continue training us. We will continue being disciples or learners, as, it mean, as that word means. Continue to learn of him to the place where all things are possible to him who believes until we are transformed and conformed into the very image of Jesus himself. He's going to train us that way. The Lord showed me years ago, he said, Jesus is your personal trainer. And so Jesus is my personal trainer. And, and, I, and I look to him, fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. It's his job to train me. And I, and I keep my focus on him, and I choose to stay in the training. I choose not to give up when it gets tough. Sometimes I, my mind wants to give up, my flesh wants to give up, but I have no choice but to continue to endure because I want to walk in all that he has for me. I don't want to go up to heaven and, and hear, well, you quit. Let's be clear. When he says, well done, thou good and faithful servant, that's not simply... Those are not just easy words tossed around. Those are for people that have endured until the end. And so there, there's, a, there's a journey that we're all going to walk. There's a determination that we all need to make. I'm going to follow him regardless of what the circumstances look like. I'm going to follow him and trust him no matter what people say. He's a faithful God. He's a good God. He's with me. He's for me. He's developing, developing me into the image of Jesus and and. and, and filling me with the mind of Christ to where I can believe that all things are possible, even when it looks impossible. That when it looks impossible, the Bible says that God sits in the heavens and laughs. He wants us to learn to laugh at things that look impossible because nothing's impossible to our God. Nothing's impossible to Him. Nothing's impossible to you who believe. And so when things look impossible, well, that's just, that's just nothing but a challenge. That's just a, that's a, and, it's, and the fact is, for God, it's easy. And so it's just worth laughing at. That's where God wants our faith to, walk, to rise to, to walk in, because that's demonstrating the kingdom of God here on this earth. God wants to release the kingdom of God here in this earth, on earth as it is in heaven. Well, heaven is, is nothing but kingdom. It's full kingdom, 100%. Joy, peace, rest. And he wants us to walk in that same place here in the kingdom and demonstrate right in front of the devil that he's defeated that he has no authority and, and no ability over us. Well, we have authority over him, and, and, he, and when we speak the name of Jesus, he must flee. We're called to walk as Jesus walked in Acts 10, 38, go about healing all who are oppressed of the devil, driving the devil off. Nothing is impossible with, with, with those who believe. This is, this is where he wants us to, to, to walk and operate. This is his goal for us, to walk as, as, uh, as free sons and daughters of God carrying his joy, his peace, his rest, his life, filled with his spirit and in intimacy with him and a oneness with him, demonstrating and walking in the authority he's given us 
releasing the kingdom of God, the glory of God everywhere, everywhere we go. And where nothing is impossible. Laughing at when something seems impossible. But all things are possible to him who believe. And he wants to train us all to that very place. You know, you think about the nation of Israel. Israel, I mean, it was it, the promise was made to Abraham and to Sarah. And he was 100 years old and she was 90 years old. Well past the time of being able to bear a child at that age, at that time. And the Bible says that that they gave forth, they, they produced a baby, a miracle baby. So you think the nation of Israel is actually a miracle baby. And, and, and they, as a nation, had all kind of journeys and all kind of difficulties were attacked. And even the, the 10 tribes in the northern part of Israel were actually scattered away. And all that was left was, was, was Judah and Benjamin. And that's where we get the name Jews is from the, is Judah. And, and yet, even 2,000 years ago, Rome basically destroyed Jerusalem and the, and the nation was scattered again. And, and they were sent around the world and the nation of Israel was, was, was destroyed. It was wiped away. And yet God fulfilled his own prophetic word, his own word that he spoke. And he brought, he brought the nation of Israel back in 1948, almost 2,000 years later. That's impossible for a nation to, that, was, that disappeared off the map 2,000 years prior to come back 2,000 years later. Uh, only God can do that. Only God can do that. And you know, it's interesting. Israel is the most opposed nation in the world. Why is it? Because they carry the promise of God. The enemy rises up. And he will, he will speak to men who will listen uh, for their own greed, their own lust, their own selfish ambition to destroy the work of God. But God, is, God has kept Israel in place and he will keep Israel in place. And Israel will fulfill its destiny because God already declared it. He made a promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and to David. And he's going to do that. And he sent his son Jesus. And he's going to do it for, for all of their sake. Even whether the people in Israel want to follow him or not, he's going to do it for their sake. Because he made a promise to them. And he will fulfill his promise even though it looks impossible. And what you have is you, you have the, the remnant in Israel that always endures and trusts God and always looks to him and, he, and he, he holds them in place and he always will. And God will hold you in place. God will keep his hand upon your life. God will, will, will protect you. He will do the impossible around you. You can rest in him and trust in him. He's a faithful God and he will train you in the process. And thank God for his patience because we all need his patience sometimes. We all have our problems we all make our mistakes. We all do things we shouldn't do at times. We all say things we shouldn't say at times. And he's wonderfully patient with us, very gracious, loving, and kind to us. And he's in a constant building process, constant training process within us, forming us into his image, continuing to work with us. You know, if you think about um, your, if you have a child, you know, a two-year-old child, if they were to t turn to you and say, I hate you, I don't like you anymore, because you're not giving them what they want at the time, you don't kick them out the back door. You just, you just kind of pat them on the head and tell them you love them, and, and uh, you might have to do a little discipline here and there, but ultimately you still, you're there for them. And if we as earthly parents can do that, evil, the Bible says evil earthly parents effectively, if we can do that, how much more can our Heavenly Father love us and take care of us and form, his, form, form us into His image and, and continue to work in us? You know, and you think about the journey of, of Abraham. He had a, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Moses. Think about the journey of Moses. You know, he had a, he had a tough journey. And in Acts 7.25, talking about him, it says, And he supposed that his brethren understood that God was granting them deliverance through him, but they did not understand. So here comes Moses into Israel, I'm sorry, into Egypt, trying to convince his people, hey, I'm the deliverer, and they didn't want to believe him. And look at the endurance he had to go through. The process he had to go through to fulfill and walk in the, in the promise that God had, even to the point where he didn't even want to do it. God had to tell him, no, you're going to do it. You're going to go. I've called you to go. You're going to go. I'll, t I'll send Abraham. I'll send Aaron with you, but you're going to do it. And he went and did it. And he, he rose up as a great speaker, even though, when he, even though at the beginning he said, I can't speak. Then he began to speak as you, as you progress through the story. And he rose into the man that God called him to be. He went through his own frustrations. He went through his own difficulties. But he brought the people to the edge of the promised land, to the Jordan River. 
It wasn't his job to carry them over, but he brought them to that point. God's a faithful God. In Philippians 4, starting in 11, verse 11, now that I speak, Not that I speak from want, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I know how to get along with humble means, and I know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled uh, and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I can do all things. I can do all things. What does the Bible say? All things are possible. All things are possible to him who believes. All things are possible to him who believes. And Paul says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. You know, the things may not look like it's going to happen. I don't know if I can make it happen. But, he says, but Paul says, I can do all things because he's going to strengthen me. He's going to strengthen me in the process. I'm going to be strengthened by him, by his spirit. He's going to fill me and strengthen me in the journey, in the process. And I can keep on enduring and I can do all things. And it doesn't matter what it looks like. I can, I can walk in and do it because he's with me. He's for me. He's building me. He's, for, he's, he's, he's called me. He's gifted me. And I'm going to walk in it. I can do all things through Christ. It doesn't matter what the circumstances are. It doesn't matter if it's good or bad. You know, I can be content in all circumstances because he's with me. He's for me. And he never leaves me. And you say, and basically, Paul's living in that abundant life. He's living in the presence of God. Paul was not a wealthy man at all. He, in fact, he really didn't have anything in the, as far as the natural world goes. But he was a man that was full of contentment and the peace of God and the joy of the Lord. And he came into, in his journey to where I can do all things who, through, through him who strengthens me. He's strengthening me every step of the way. And there's nothing that can stop me from doing whatever he's called me to do because he'll strengthen me to do what I need to do and then he'll do what he needs to do and will accomplish the work of God that he wants to be accomplished. And God will, God will be glorified in all of it. So I just want to pray for you and, and just encourage your heart in, the, in this prayer that God is for you, he's with you, he'll strengthen you, and he'll bring you through. And he'll do all things and he wants you to walk in the mind of Christ. So, Father, I just thank you for your amazing grace over your people that are tuning in here tonight. I thank you, Father, that you strengthen their hearts, that they can continue to endure, because they will see the promise come forth in the right time, in the perfect time, and that you're a God of faithfulness and a God of love, and you're fighting for them, and you're with them, and I thank you for it in Jesus' name, that they be encouraged with your great love and peace in Jesus' name. So thank you for joining us. I'll see you next time. God bless you. Buck Eaton is the pastor of Sweetwater Church, located at 1730 Williams Trace Boulevard, Sweet Eye in Sugarland, Texas. Sunday service is at 1 p.m. and broadcasted live on Facebook. For other services and events, refer to the website, sweetwaterchurch.org.